Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for part two of our pre-show. And that'll begin in about oh, just under 10 minutes. And today we're going to cover what happens if you don't convert your copper, your regular Ma Bell lines, over to voice over IP by August 2nd. You'll get what's called no dial tone. So that's something that uh, stick around for. I think you're going to find it very interesting, especially the history of how all this started and why it's ending. And I believe it'll be uh, very, very interesting to, uh, to watch. I have to say before we get started that I'm not smart enough to do this kind of graphics and all. So uh, I have to thank two special ladies. And without them, I probably would not be doing what I'm doing right now. That's Luria Petrucci and Kat Mulvihill. Luria was kind enough to put together this overlay for us for the pre-show. And Kat, many, many hours spent on videos on how to route audio on a Mac, which is entirely different than that on a PC. So uh, I finally made the switch back to a Mac. Glad I did. And I think I've only got one or two programs that require Windows, but I have virtual machines in the cloud, so I never have a problem getting to a Windows machine. But anyway, uh, thank you ladies and really appreciate all your hard work. And uh, I know it's rude, but excuse me for just a moment. Hello. Yeah, a little under eight minutes. I forgot. All right, I'll take care of it. I'll see you in eight minutes. I forgot to tell you, the chat is working and the questions are working. If you have any questions, concerns, gripes, anything, put them in there. We'll be glad to answer them. I've allocated an hour for this and it'll probably only take about 30 minutes because I want to breeze through it because there's a lot of text. Unfortunately, that's the way it came to me. I cut it down as best I could and we'll see what happens. And uh, it'll be informative and yes, you can get the slides. There'll be a link at the end for you to get the slides. And uh, you even have the ability to book a free, no obligation consultation 15 minutes and uh, let's hear what you got to say what you're trying to do and see if we can help you and uh, what else have we got here that's pretty much it I do get a couple questions all the time though and it's something that I want to address number one is what does our studio look like I didn't have a chance to set up the camera so you can't see behind the scenes. I promise you next time you'll be able to see behind the scenes. And the other one is, what do you see when you come into your office? Are you in a, in a, in a cave, in a, in, you know, whatever? And I said, no, not really. We have a very, very interesting, I'm looking at it right now. There's a camera set up right over there that'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, with your permission, I'd like to show you what the disgusting view we have to see every single morning. So here we go. Now, you got to admit, that is really disgusting. How can anybody get any work done sitting in that rocking chair, looking out over beautiful, sunny Venice, Florida? I'm sorry. It's tough. No, we don't have an Airbnb, so don't even think about it. But I'll leave that on there. Let me come back in here. There I am. Blink. And I'm in. So, from this aspect, I think I'm going to back out, let you enjoy the music, and uh, get ready for uh, the presentation. It starts promptly at 2.30. And thank you all for signing up.
Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you don't know me, my name is Michael Price and I've been helping small businesses enter into the government marketplace for over three decades. That's a long time. Today's topic, no phone service. What does that mean? Does anybody even know? Let me know in the comments below. The chat is live, the questions are live, our staff will answer whatever we can, and uh, I've allocated an hour for today, but because of all the information, I've had to cut it down quite a bit just so you didn't end up sitting there reading text the whole time. We wanted to get a little edutainment in at the same time, so. But a quick background, about 10 years ago, I finally made the decision to ditch Ma Bell. And you may have had the same issue, I don't know. Uh, if you move or you go from East Coast to West Coast or North to South or Midwest or wherever, I still haven't figured out where the Midwest is yet, but I guess it's in, kind of in the middle of the country. And you always ended up with a new phone number or then we allowed number porting. But anyway, I finally decided to cut my phone bill as much as I possibly could. And I went to voice over IP and I'll give you the history of that as we move along. And I never looked back and it was a thing of beauty and joy for all. So thank you for joining us today. And hopefully with the background and what your options are, you'll get a better understanding of what we can do, what our problem is, how serious it is, and how to solve it. Are you among the 65 million people who still have copper phone lines? Does anybody even remember a rotary phone? And for you millennials, no, it did not have buttons inside those little dials. You have to rotate it rotate it, rotate it, the dial. And that was fun. I grew up with one of those. The problem is I didn't save it when uh, we cleaned out everything. So that's my problem. But anyway, but 59 million people have already converted over to voice over IP. What is voice over IP? Everybody asks. Well, do you ever use Skype? Do you ever use Teams? Do you ever use Google, Google Hangouts? Uh, do you use your phone connected to your Comcast router at home or your Roadrunner or your Xfinity or your fill in the blank? They all use voice over IP. You'll find out how they do it in an upcoming slide. Oh, but by the way, the last item is those of you that have a cell phone, when you make a call and the signal hits that tower, which is right outside here, when that signal hits that tower, how do you think it gets processed? Tower to tower? Well, towers are only 16 miles apart. It goes down the tower and over a new thing called the internet. All cell phone calls are processed end to end using voice over IP. Interesting tidbit. Today's agenda. We're going to have the what, why, when, <clears throat> all the standard stuff as far as what's the history how are we going to move forward from history? And uh, how does it affect you as a government contractor? Let's talk about the history first. What is it? Well, POTS stands for Plain Old Telephone Service. And hard to believe 
It's been a hundred years that we've had copper running this country for communications. What kind of communications? Excellent question. Why do we have it? Well, the problem was, does anybody remember last year when that hurricane came up the coast, the east coast, and ended up in New York and flooded out all the high-rise buildings? What do you think was in the basement of all those high-rise buildings? You got it. It ran the elevators, it ran the security systems, it ran the fax machines, it ran the phones, it ran everything. Once that got flooded, all services came to a halt. Because all it is is physical electrical lines. They lost power, they lost everything. When will the change come? Well, <clears throat> as you can see, come August 2nd, you're going to lose your phone system. And if you don't already have an alternative or made an alternative, this is what you're going to hear on August 2nd. What do you think? Which would you rather have? I think I'd rather have a new phone system. What's the history of all this mess? We have to understand where we came from before we can understand where we're going. It is a physical connectivity, just like you have ethernet cables when you plug your computer into your router at home or office. There's four pairs of wires in that ethernet connection. Just imagine how thick a wire is that has 50 or 100 pair in it. And that comes into a pedestal, <clears throat> possibly sitting right in front of your house, your office. <clears throat> and they just run those wires up into your home or office and tone them out to make sure that they got the right color pair and you have phone service. Well, that's the good news. <clears throat> the bad news is, what happens if you need multiple lines? Well, for those of you that still have copper phone service, you're probably paying close to $50 per line per month. And that's a pretty heavy phone bill. That's rivaling your cable bill with whoever. The nice part about voice over IP is it uses the internet. And that could be wireless. It could be like cell phones. It could be fiber fiber you can drop in water all day long and it'll never get affected it's glass we have some challenges to overcome and they need to be urgently addressed we are going to do that we're going to have the options which are kind of cool when you stop and think about it. <clears throat> the logical choice, and believe me, I'm a cord cutter, so I do not advocate, nor do I promote the cable provider. But if you have cable internet, and there's a difference between cable internet and fiber internet, not much, but there's a big difference. Cable internet has copper which is that line that comes in and I don't know if that's going to get affected chances are no but most of the cable companies have already switched over to fiber to begin with 
you just plug your phone into the router. You either have one or two lines or however many it is, and they provide your phone service. Well, how does that happen? It's going over my cable internet, which is voice over IP. It uses a technology that we call ATA. ATA is analog terminal adapter. I'm going to leave that arrow there because we're coming back to that one. And that's a very important piece of equipment. It's built into every cable modem. You could also go hosted. Hosted would be somebody like an 8x8 or a um, Ring Central or any number of other uh, providers that do this. And that's expensive. In fact, in my opening remarks, we were on Hosted. We went from Ma Bell to Hosted. This is cool. I'm on the internet. I'm having a good time. I have crystal clear reception. It never goes up, never goes down. It's always the same perfect signal. We were with 8x8. We had 10 phones in our office. 8x8 says you have to have a separate phone number for each phone. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't need separate numbers. I need one main number coming into my business. $30 a month base fee. So that's 300 bucks a month. We're starting right there. But we also wanted to have a fax server, which was $20 a month per phone per line basically and conference calling and all kinds of other stuff music on hold the whole routine we were spending five hundred and forty dollars a month on a hosted system i said there's got to be a better way that's coming up soon then there's hybrid which is kind of a mix and match of either one the easiest way I can describe it, it would be either to uh, go with Vonage or Uma. And both of them use and, and are built in an ATA, analog terminal adapter. The one we decided to finally go with was on premise. And if you've got the means and the technical backup to help you, the best way to go is to go on premise. What do I mean by that? First of all, every one of these solutions for telephone all have one thing in common. They all use an open source software called Asterisk. Like the, I think it's a shift eight on your keyboard. That's an Asterisk. Don't ask me what it is, why it, that name is. I don't know. I just know they're a client of mine. And Asterisk runs PBX, public branch exchange, or private branch exchange, and that software processes the calls. 96, I believe, was the first what was called e-switch. They went away from the mechanical switches to software switches. Software obviously runs a lot faster than mechanical. So that is open source software. You can download that, put it on a your own server, your own laptop, whatever you want to use, and you now have yourself a phone system. Well, we went one step further, and there's still one step past where we are. We run everything on virtualized hardware. We have a data center in our office, and we have a huge data center in Virginia in an old CIA building. And we have one installed in our office, and that's the one we generally use, but we have a redundant one sitting in the cloud. So if either one goes down, the other one takes over, and you don't have to worry about anything. Now, is this appropriate for home? Possibly. Uh, especially if you want to maintain multiple lines. I don't suggest it for home use. 
I would say just go with your cable provider or just get rid of copper altogether and just have everybody with their own separate phone number on a cell phone. You're accomplishing the same thing. You don't have a thing to worry about. But the on-premise was kind of cool. We cut our, our, our uh, monthly bill down from $540 a month. Are you ready? What do you think I was able to cut the bill down to? Let me know in the, in the chat. 400, 300, 200, 100. How about $30 a month? How'd I do? Oh, but what that gives me, that gives me a trunk line with unlimited incoming outgoing calls. Traffic, if you will. Unlimited and one phone number. And it also runs our fax server, our conference server, our meeting server. All of our servers are all running off of that phone system. We also, in our office, I hate to admit it, only because it's an all-in-one printer, a fax machine. That fax machine is an extension on our phone system. So if I need to send you a fax right away, I just drop the paper in the scanner, punch the button, and out it goes. Coming in, it comes in to the server, whichever one happens to be working, and I get a PDF via email. That is totally cool. So those are your options on how to handle the changeover. It's going to happen, and it's just I, I can only assume that it's going to be brutal. In conclusion, how does this affect you as a government contractor? Well, just to give you an idea, Every one of those solutions I told you about today all come from, for the most part, one company who has bought up all the smaller companies and they're a client of mine. They're offering this offering to the government. The government has pretty much gone away from copper completely. Already did it years ago and still doing it and still improving and expanding their systems. Do you realize that 66% of those of you who are registered on SAM and there's about just right around 800,000 registered and do you realize that only about 60, oh, actually 66% do not accept credit cards? And I got a little ahead of myself. Do you have a contract vehicle? Which means, do you accept credit cards? You have to. It's required. But it's even better, 70% of you don't have a website. Why? It's required. The website's not required, but that's the first thing that any government buyer asks for is, do you have a website? When you're talking with one of them, and I'm going to give you some secrets on how to improve your relationship. Remember the big R, relationships. It's the only way you can sell to the government correctly and long term. It's a form of free advertising and marketing. Every single time a buyer will ask, do you have a website? We can help you there. And just as a side note, very quickly, is that we constantly get questions, or I actually constantly ask the question, do you have a website? 
And the guy says, well, we're working on it. Well, how long have you been working on it? He says, oh, about three months now. I can do you a website in 10 minutes that works. And I'm not a programmer. I'm not a coder. So what does that tell you? It's very easy to do. It's a thing called WordPress. People like to use Wix and all this other stuff. That's really designed for, please forgive me, amateurs. You want a serious website? 70% of the websites on the internet are run by WordPress. And it is just a dream. We have tried all of them. We even went back as far as, if I can remember the name, uh, Joomla, which was fine. Actually, had created a website on it. And it worked okay, but it really wasn't that big of a developer community. Went to WordPress, and the developer community just kept growing and growing and growing. I mean, anything you want to do on it, you can do. So, from that aspect, why do I bring all this up? The reason is, we're here to help entertain and educate in any order that you want. I've told you all about what's going to happen August 2nd on your phone system. Take action. The last thing in the world you want is to hear crickets when the government's trying to call you to give you a million dollar order. My suggestion would be book yourself a 15 minute, no obligation consultation. I'm available most days and if I see a booking come in I'll generally stop what I'm doing and take the booking but just remember no obligation means free and to answer the question that people have been asking yes the answer is you can get the slides Let me find it first. It's not there. It was there before. My apologies. There it is. Sorry. If you want the slides, just type in this address, marketus.com slash 2.30 p.m. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bid you adieu for today. If you have any questions, I will leave the chat and questions open. Our staff will be sitting there answering them for you. And my uh, final thoughts to you are, is what you don't want to hear. What you want to hear is, thank you so much for your attention. And we look forward to seeing you soon.